What's up guys, Hanish here, and today I wanted to jump in with some Destiny 2 new stuff. So we're going to take a look at the new Nightfall Strike exclusive reward. This is the first one in the Warmind expansion. I'm also going to take a look at a bunch of hidden classified exotics, some of which may be new exotic weapons. There are also some exotic vouchers and some other bizarre exotic items. I also want to talk about the hunt for the Black Spindle. There are some other rare unique rewards, some of which come from Escalation Protocol. We've got a bunch of fixes, updates and changes coming from Bunch and some other stuff, so let's jump straight into it. Firstly though, this video is brought to you by a new sponsor, Now Drinks. So these are designed for gamers, but instead of being full of caffeine, sugar, taurine and all of that kind of stuff, Now Drinks are packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and L-theanine and lemon balm. And these improve performance, they reduce your stress, they increase your focus. So if you want to try them out, they do have a sampler on the website. You can use code HOUNDISH to save 10% and the details will be in the description below. So starting out with new loot, of course, this week we have the Nocris Strike as the Nightfall. A lot of people were wondering if there was a specific piece of gear tied to the Nightfall. And DMG did say, yes, this week you can earn your very own Redacted from the Strange Terrain Nightfall. Happy hunting. So we got that confirmation that there is indeed a reward from the Nightfall. And so far, a lot of people have been getting this rocket launcher, the Braytech Osprey. So this is actually one of the Braytech weapons, kind of like the other ones that you get from Mana Bray. And it's looking like this is indeed the reward that you actually get from the Nightfall. To take a brief look at it, we've got High Impact Frame. It has Linear Compensator, Quick Launch and Counter Mass. The middle column has High Velocity Rounds, Implosion Rounds or Alloy Casing. And then we've got Cluster Bombs, Rocket Spawn Clusters upon Detonation. So perks wise, it is a pretty decent rocket, somewhat similar to Sins of the Past and the Curtain Call. This one is a little bit more akin to the Sins of the Past in terms of the stats, but the perks are pretty much representative of what you would see on all of the other good legendary launches in the game. So essentially, they've given us another option here. Some people have speculated though that this isn't the actual Nightfall reward. Of course, with it being the Nocris Strike, a lot of the folks who are going after the Black Spindle got very interested in this. Another thing to mention is that Strange Terrain is one of the meditations this week. So a lot of people have been looking for secrets inside of the Nightfall, inside of those meditations, in the hopes to find the Black Spindle. So far, nobody has been successful, so we'll have to wait and see down the road. It could come from another location, it could be a different quest, it could be a random reward from a secret type of mission, like we saw in the original version. But just in case you missed it, I did manage to find some of the perks for the Black Spindle. So they actually added Mulligan into the game. And this is where missing a shot has the chance to return that round to the magazine. That of course was a bonus on the Black Spindle. We can also see the classified masterwork details. And pretty excitingly, Black Spindle will feature the box breathing perk on the masterwork version. And this will increase your range and precision damage when aiming down the sights for a short time. So it's looking like Black Spindle could be an absolute beast when we finally get it. You'll have to let me know though if you guys have any theories on where we're going to get the black spindle. Now before we go any further, yesterday I mentioned something new called Arms Week and this appeared on Bungie.net. There are a series of different objectives that are going to come up. So we have Arms Week Nightfall, the Prospector. We also have one for Hardlight and the Rat King. So if we look at the first one, Modifiers, Gold Rush, complete this Nightfall to upgrade the Prospector's Masterwork. So these are actually catalysts which will be time gated behind specific Nightfalls. I should mention the Prospector Catalyst will grant plus 40 Blast Radius and it's also going to give the weapon deeper pockets for increased ammo reserves. The hard light will get plus 25 points of stability, which hopefully will reduce that screen shake. And then we've got the Rat King. It's going to get plus 20 points of aim assist and recoil direction, which are hidden stats. And then we have Infestation, which is a new perk. Improved aim assist and recoil direction refreshes the health on vermin invisibility trigger. So those three will become available, probably in some off weeks where there aren't iron banners and faction rallies and things like that, which is definitely a good use of the content. And I'm looking forward to picking those up. But in terms of currently classified stuff, interesting. Interestingly, there is a whole bunch of armor, so we can see various armor sets right there. And there are pages and pages of this stuff, so these could be some armor sets that we've yet to receive. But then also in the database right here, we can see various classified exotics. So we've got two different items described simply as exotics. There's a classified and then another classified. There are also three other intrinsic perks which are classified. Like I said before, we did find Mulligan, and that's just one of the trait bonuses on the Black Spindle. So chances are one of these three 
Tree will also be the Intrinsic for the Black Spindle, but then again we're still left with a couple of Intrinsics and a couple of Classified Exotics there, so it seems like there is actually another Exotic hidden away. We don't have 100% confirmation of that just yet, but it's pretty interesting and I'd be curious to hear if you guys have any theories about that as well. Moving on though, I just wanted to mention a few brief things about Faction Rallies that you may not have heard. So firstly, there are some Exotic Ornaments that you can acquire by pledging to various factions, and these are for armor pieces, so there is Gaze Beyond Worlds, and this is an ornament for Eye of Another World. There is Predestination, the ornament for the Knucklehead Radar, and then there is another one called Blazing Hearth, and this is one for Crest of Alpha Lupi. We can't currently see what that looks like, the icon is classified. We do however know that these will come from Faction Rallies by actually pledging to different factions, so Bungie are making a few more reasons to do that. On top of this, I mentioned that some of the exotic catalysts will only drop when pledging to a faction, so Graviton Lance found by pledging to Seekers of Exodus, which is Dead Orbit, Sunshot Catalyst found by pledging to the Followers of War, of course the FW and then we have Sweet Business, found by pledging to the Defenders of Earth. So it's going to be really cool to go in and get some of those. On top of this though, on the exotic front, there is an exotic ornament voucher in the database. Take this voucher to Tess and exchange it for an exotic ornament of your choice. So it looks like that could be a thing dropping at some point down the road. Next though, I wanted to just give a brief shout to a couple of the rewards from Escalation Protocol. So of course there is the armor and the weapons that we've seen. This week we do actually have the SMG available by completing the final boss. It's a really neat SMG, cool looking weapon, it's got some very cool bonuses as well. I may actually make a separate review video for that. On top of this though there are a couple of vanity items. So we have the Pacific Deception. This is the Sparrow for Escalation Protocol. I believe these items can drop from the Wave 5 chests, potentially the Wave 3 chest as well, just very randomly and very rare. There's also the Groundswell Nullifier 99 and this is the ship. This one comes with that kind of jet style model which is pretty cool. So it's worth mentioning that there are a couple of additional rewards there. I also made a video yesterday about the shotgun that you can get from Escalation Protocol, which is absolutely one of the best in the game, so I'll link that below if you want to check it out. Moving on though, I've got a couple of quick updates to mention. So when the May update launched, Bungie was supposed to have fireteam matchmaking changes, basically to improve things for solo players, and it should be reducing the number of four player fire teams that you actually end up matchmaking against. This however got turned off due to a bug, but Bungie Help tweeted yesterday, Crucible fireteam matchmaking changes have been fully re-enabled, solo players will still match against pre-made fire teams, but will find the playing field more even than it was pre-Warmind. So hopefully over the past day or so, if you're a solo player, your experience should have been improved. I think it's definitely positive that Bungie are looking into this. On top of this, yesterday, of course, we did get a brief roadmap update. And the main things to note is that there will be an update on May the 29th, so an actual patch that will download. Faction Rally will be returning with the various improvements and the new rewards. There will also be the introduction of Crucible Labs, and this is basically going to be a test kind of environment for future content and patches. So that'll be very interesting. And then we have exotic armor sandbox changes. So Bungie will be making a bunch of changes and presumably reworking some exotic armor, kind of like they did with some of the weapons. And that is coming on May the 29th. Pretty crazy. It's just a couple of weeks away. So that's going to be really cool. And then of course, in July, there will be a summer event. This is going to be called Solstice of Heroes, and that's pretty much all we know about it right now. We will also be getting bounties, expansion 1 and 2 raid lairs for prestige modes, PC clan text chat, year 1 triumphs, and more exotic armor sandbox changes. So it sounds like the sandbox change updates will be kind of staggered, but then of course they go on to September when we get gear collections, records, weapon slot changes, randomization, and new gameplay modes. The cool thing to talk about though when it comes to Crucible Labs actually arriving on May 29th, is that of course we're leading up to September. So it seems pretty likely that we could actually get to sample some things like the weapon slot changes, maybe even new modes, you know, adjustments to 6v6. We'll have to wait and see exactly what they can do with it and how much they can push into it, whether we would maybe see sandbox changes and stuff like that as well. We don't know just yet, but whatever this is, it is a very positive start. More of it can be done as we go down the road. But anyway, guys, that is going to summarize the video for now. I'll keep you guys posted on Warmind content as always but i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have a like is very much appreciated below if you're new to the channel be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more destiny 2 content i do keep up to date with all of the news i'll be covering all of the rest of the warmind content and everything going over the summer into september so stay tuned here on the channel once again that link for new drinks will be in the description below check that out if you are interested one final thing i wanted to say for any of you guys still watching is thank you so much for all of the recent support on the channel. We're now approaching 
190,000 subs. So we're on our way to that big 200k man, which is absolutely insane. As I've said before, you know, it's something I've never really expected to be able to do. I just made the content and it seemed like quite a few of you enjoyed watching it. So thank you so much. I'm always doing my best to bring the best content here to the channel. Like I said, I really appreciate all of the support, guys. Let's see how quick we can get to that 200k man, hopefully in the next couple of months. That would be absolutely amazing. But anyway, guys, I'm not going to babble on any longer. I appreciate you watching as always. Whatever you do, I hope you have an awesome day.